Hello and welcome everyone to Expedition Online Glacier Bay. I'm Jonathan Knights. With me in the commentator booth tonight, we've got Jessica Martin and Sam Donovan. This is what we have been working up to all season. It has all been gearing up to the final ascent where our final three explorers, we've got Dame Yell, Mariana, and David have managed to survive all of the crossroads. Let's talk about this final three and what they've kind of done to get here. So uh, let's look at the only team Kelly left in the game, Mariana. I mean, she started off within the team, within the um, Team Kelly tribe as a pretty strong competitor. She seemed to have a strong four um, working in with uh, Cupini. Um, she was also really tight with Bridget and Bill, but, um, she, obviously they ran into trouble real quick. Um, Sam, talk a little bit about Mariana's early part of her game. Yeah, I mean, you said it best. They just ran into Buzzsaw. She couldn't get on teams that were winning challenges and just unfortunately had to go to some crossroads where her alliances just kind of kept getting cut down. When, when we start with two parties but then move eventually to three smaller parties there's really nowhere to hide and she did a great job of maneuvering her way through that and staying alive despite you know going to the serrated peak she, that was a nice benefit of her game to go there and you know take advantage of being away from camp but then not coming back and then being a target um she you know just had to rely on her social game early on and that clearly got her further because if you want me to touch on her rendezvous game she was down eight to two janet to kelly um her and bambi so the fact that she's here is quite honestly a miracle and no shortage on her part of just playing a fantastic social game yeah absolutely i mean going into her rendezvous it seemed like she had a lot of people who were really looking out for her she did find that compass although she played it incorrectly um jess talk about just the fact that she she had a lot of people who were kind of saying don't say mariana let's push on to someone else danielle was um someone who was doing that obviously david they they got deep but it seemed to be more players than that from what i would saw yeah she positioned herself very well for being the lone team kelly member left and i don't think i should say it right now but danielle has a bomb that she wants to drop and finale that all the mods already know about and that relates to her and Mariana but aside from that Mariana did do a good job of talking to people and making relationships with team Janet outside of Danielle like she made a bond with David so I think it will come down to tonight to hear how she backs everything up that she's done thus far and how she explains why she's the lone team Kelly member of all the Janets yeah absolutely I mean Speaking of Danielle uh, and getting into her next, I mean, Mariana really did use that relationship with Danielle really well. Danielle was playing a lot of relationships, but Danielle and Mariana had a, um, a special bond from day zero. And sometimes those can really excel you forward. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Mariana is able to talk about that and if she's able to get the right the right side of the favor from the jury from that because I'm sure Danielle is also going to say hey I've, I weaponized Mariana Mariana's going to say I weaponized um, Danielle so it's going to be interesting to see who's going to get the points for that um, but let's talk a little bit about Danielle's game I mean let's talk about a powerhouse in this game socially Danielle has been dominating it seems like she's been in an alliance with just about everybody everyone's coming to her with information she was handling it very well she was maneuvering her way through this game uh sam let's talk about danielle's uh early game and how she was able to get the numbers and the power um getting into the rendezvous yeah danielle plays an interesting game where it's it's easy to sit back in the early game and kind of just let the game evolve and just don't picture yourself as a target. Don't throw yourself out there to become a target. Danielle takes the opposite approach and talks to everybody, is, you know, stern pots, just kind of going, going, and going. But she makes it work. Everybody likes her. Everybody, like you said, is having conversations with her and telling her things that, frankly, they're not telling other people. So she just does a good job of having everybody's ear, and she makes it work, and clearly it worked through the whole game. I think she still has plenty of votes on the jury if she can pitch her case well. So... Her social game and her strategic game mostly is just really impressive with how she can, you know, pick and prod and choose which directions she wants to go with which people because she's connected to everybody. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she has the, has the compass play, which she played at the final five. Um, I'm going to say she played it correctly. Uh, who knows where David would have voted if he, she had not told him right before the crossroads that she was going to play it. Um, then she wins the all-important final crossroads. Jess, as far as resumes are concerned, I think Danielle's is probably the strongest. But I, after watching her at the last crossroads, I do worry about her at the final ascent. Um, what are your thoughts of her game throughout and her chances in this final ascent? Danielle has played a really strong game. And I think on the front end, it was a little bit stronger because no one was really catching on to what she was doing. But it seems now come rendezvous, it got a little messier um, and people started to see what she was up to. It's still nonetheless, she's played a great game. But I do think the crossroads last night, she got caught in a lot of lies that the jury caught on to. And she also came across a little cockier than she needed to. And I think if she takes that tone at the final ascent, it might not resonate as well with them. While she does have a super strong resume, David also has a good case. And I think it will come down to who delivers more relatable and more concise pitch at the end. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Let's talk about uh, that resume from David, because I definitely agree with that. I mean, David had also, obviously, um, Team Janet. I don't think we mentioned that about Danielle, but Danielle and David, both uh, Team Janet members. But David was able to build strong relationships with a lot of the former Team Janet members. He, When he did get broken off, he gets broken off with Haley and Katie. And um, managing through that alliance was really difficult at times. You know, and then at the beginning of Rendezvous, he really runs into that bomb where uh, Katie kind of turns on him for what seems like a bit of a miscommunication slash misunderstanding um you know whatever way you're looking at it it was katie versus david and then he loses Haley. um sam let's talk about david uh throughout the early part of the game and and that beginning part of the rendezvous where it looked like he was dead in the water yeah so david went to a lot of crossroads early on but like you said luckily he had katie and Haley, so they were a strong trio um getting rid of bridget and bill in consecutive votes that were fairly simple votes um, but with that power and the fact that Katie did give him that compass and it was kind of common knowledge um, by the time they hit Rendezvous, he was definitely in, in the crosshairs coming into Rendezvous. I mean, he plays his compass at the first vote. Um, Philip did technically have more votes, but he received three votes. Um, so he's clearly a target there. The next vote is the Katie vote, which was unanimous, but she didn't go out without a fight and, you know, kind of damns his name all the way through. And then the next vote, he loses Haley. So that's three not great crossroads for David in a row. Um, but he rebounded fantastically. Um, you know, he's in with these people. He's got this day zero alliance. And the fact that he, you know, hit rock bottom and was still able to make final three is just so damn impressive. Yeah, he wins two huge exemption challenges. I think one of them was definitely his name was floating around in that. Um, those wins can really solidify a group, especially if you need a number. Jess, talk about what you think David needs to bring tonight to really kind of take things home tonight. David is a great speaker, and I think he has played an awesome game. I think the one thing that is a dark cloud hanging over his head is taking the compass from Katie, which I think is going to be a topic that will be brought up in her speech and maybe some other people's as well. I think he really needs to clean his name on why he did that. From watching the jury, I think he needs to show that he's a genuine person and that he wasn't doing that just to take advantage of someone who didn't know what they were doing. He needs to clear his name based on that. Great resume, but that's the dark cloud hanging over him. Yeah, I think so as well. I mean, let's talk about... Uh, yeah, David obviously has played a very strong game, great speaker, but let's talk about this jury a little bit because I think the dynamics are going to be key. Um, like Jess just alluded to, uh, Katie is holding a grudge against David. She really feels like David played her. He um, took advantage of her, which is partially true partially a little bit untrue i mean he did you know offer the compass back kind of in the middle of crossroads you know put her on the spot in a, in a big way um i mean 
it's it's a real tough situation. It's, but Sam, how big of an influence do you think KD is going to have over the rest of the jury? I mean, the, the group ended up choosing to vote out KD instead of David um, when all the information came out. Do you think? They're still thinking about that, or do you think the jury is now kind of taking Katie's side on this? Yeah, I mean, that's a tough one, because everybody loves Katie. I mean, mm-hmm. she is the MVP of this season, and what you hear from her, like, you you want to like her, and you have she has influence on all of these people. That being said, strictly looking at it from a game perspective, it was a good move on David's part. He mm-hmm. knew he had a target on his back, and he had this opportunity to get a compass, so he used it, and I think... That dark cloud that Jess keeps talking about, he might just need to own that and say, yeah, you know what? I did this game move. It was strictly gameplay. It was nothing personal, but I had to do it to get further in the game and look where I am now. So hopefully the jury doesn't um, look at it as a personal move and they see it strictly as a game move, essentially. Yeah. And honestly speaking, I think in some ways it helped David get to the end because it made him less of a threat because everyone knew that he's not getting that one that one vote and when there's only eight people voting and there's three people at the final three there's that's not a lot of votes um to go around so f- to definitely not have one i think it helped people keep david around a little bit longer than maybe they would have because other than that black cloud i don't really see a knock on david's game up to this point um let's talk about some of the other uh jury members so far so we had philip who came in first and you know it's kind of been the mayor of of the jury um and i mean a position that's usually given jokingly but with philip it actually was true i mean katie came in first katie was devastated and philip jumps on right away and kind of talks her down and lets her know and kind of lets her know it's just a game you know that kind of stuff and since then is it's kind of uh led this jury a little bit um how big of an influence do you think philip's had whose name has been kind of popping up the most from what you guys have been hearing with the jury i think philip in general just have a positive influence on anyone that comes in and is upset who voted them off he's so rational and level-headed that you could be pissed off at person x and I think he'll talk you down and maybe give you a different perspective of why maybe you should vote for them and why it was a good game move. Yeah, he definitely knows the game, which is helpful. So he he can see things from that game perspective. And just kind of like Jess said, his positive attitude is just electric. And we've all played these games before. And while Jess may not have ever been voted out of a game, (laughs) you know how much the game takes over your brain. And when you get voted out, it stings. And you want to take it off personal so philip was a great mayor of the jury and you know talking everybody down as soon as they got there it was really fun to see him bring that up um jonathan to your question on who they're talking about in the jury i've heard all three names frankly i've i've seen everybody say great pitch for mariana but she needs to show us a little bit more same for david same for danielle like they all have kind of they, they all need to come in strong for this because i truly don't think anybody in the jury has their mind made up for who they are voting for no, and it's an interesting jury dynamic. I mean, when you have uh, Bambi and Katie who are maybe a little bit more inexperienced with these types of games and maybe how this sort of thing um, works. Uh, and then you have some guys who are really experienced in Joshua, Mike, Carl, Haley, who have played a lot of these games. I, I left Olivia out of that group to Anna probably know to kind of keep their decision um not undecided until they get to a final ascent you know i'm kind of interested to see what kind of questions we're going to get from guys like josh and mike you know who don't really have any gripes but you know are definitely going to want to put these guys to the test yeah it's all about putting some heat on even if you don't feel hurt from the game on a personal level you got to make these guys feel it a little bit and you know light a little fire under their ass once in a while to you know get the truth out of them so i do agree that josh and mike will be the people that probably lead that charge and really putting some heat under them it seems like there's two different types of players that they're judging in this jury there's the more sneaky type david and danielle and then mariana who was definitely a lot more under the radar so it seems like there's two different sets of questions that the jury will be asking to kind of figure out where their vote goes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, from from the way I'm looking at it, you have two players who have really had to grind and survive in Mariana and David. And then you've got Danielle, who has managed to play this game from the top. She's kind of chosen her final three. Um, her backup final three came 
you know, fourth and fifth. Um, I'm wondering how much how much credit that's going to get to the jury, or if too many alliances going to come back to bite her in the butt. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see. The jury is going to have their pick on what they think is the best game. And the great thing about this game is you have an opinion. Just Sam, you have an opinion. I have an opinion. But we've watched this whole game. We've watched it from all angles. And none of it matters. The only thing that matters is what these eight jury members decide, what they come to, what that majority is. It's going to be a lot of fun to see. I'm expecting fireworks. I'm expecting praise. I'm expecting insults. I'm expecting all kinds of things. And I have no idea who's going to take this. I genuinely think all three of these players have played a game good enough to win. It's up to the jury now to decide who's going to be the winner of Expedition Online Glacier Bay.